Ad Astra, directed by James Gray and starring Brad Pitt. It's kind of nice to see Brad Pitt in something that's original and big budget like this. This is one of the final movies that 20th Century Fox produced before it was bought by Disney. And hopefully they're not basing the success of all these movies on if they should continue to do original big budget productions. Because it looks like for the numbers this movie's getting, it's not going to be the biggest success ever. It's a space movie where Brad Pitt plays an astronaut who is on an expedition to Mars to figure out this anomaly that's been spreading itself across the galaxy. They call it the surge. It's been messing with all the electricity and it's causing panic across the globe with many thinking this is going to bring an end to humanity. They send out Brad Pitt's character Roy McBride to see if he can connect with the Lemur Project, which they believe is a source of the surge. Like a lot of space movies that have been coming out this last decade, which if you look, there's pretty much every year been a movie that centers around an astronaut. Uh, they've been keeping a good dose of these movies lately, and every one of them has a different kind of tone and a different type of story. This one is way more philosophical, the way it goes about its story. You could definitely get a lot of different metaphors between him and his father, and what the Lemur Project is all about, and his venture into space, going as far as Neptune. I really appreciate the way that they show how the future of space travel will look. They show people who are taking trips to space much like you would an airplane. And you go to a space airport, which is really interesting in itself. It's not this beautiful, luxurious place that you see in most sci-fi movies. Instead, it looks just like any other boring airport. Some people might find that to not be too creative, but to me, I like this more uh, contemporary, futuristic uh, reality because I think this is the version of space travel that would most likely exist. There probably would be a subway at the nearest spaceport. Brad Pitt himself gives a pretty mellow performance, playing a character who is meant to have, even down to a physical level, a really slow heartbeat, and he's meant to talk really slowly about things. He uh, often narrates in the background. I could see some people being turned off by the way he almost talks like one of those Matthew McConaughey uh, car commercials where it's really just slow toned and dry and uh, it's it's and philosophical in its way of talking but I could see some people not being really into that and finding it pretentious at times I did find it to be a little much and not too engaging but I don't know if the movie is even trying to attempt that. I think the movie is just trying to tell the story about someone who obviously had a lot of issues with his dad. He goes after him in space and when he first sees him it's not like he has this giant wide-eyed smile or jumping into his arms or anything like that. It's a really subtle scene that I think more is meant to show that Brad Pitt's father is long gone. Tommy Lee Jones, I think, does a really fantastic job in this movie. To me, I could maybe relate it mostly to uh, seeing someone uh, lose a father to Alzheimer's, for instance. You see your father, but he's not really fully there anymore. He's not the same person, and deep down you know that person is gone, and the person that's in front of you is sometimes completely different. That seems to be what this movie is like, but I've also read some metaphors of people relating it to the aspect of God and if he's really there and if he is there what he wants from us what he's trying to do and what his real purpose is and what our relation is to that God person or if they are a person um, I, I've seen some people write about this movie in that way and I'm definitely thinking people are going to be going towards that narrative a lot more and I see that here too but my main problem with the movie is that it can be a little slow at times, and I often don't know what direction they're really going with it. And at one point, I mean, they're in space, and there's just a monkey that attacks Brad Pitt. I mean, that's something that's in this movie. Brad Pitt accidentally kills his entire crew at one point. It's just got some weird action points in there that don't almost fit in with the rest of the movie because the movie has a completely different tone and nature to it. I wouldn't really consider this like an adventure movie because yeah, he goes into space, but it's not really about the journey. It's more about, it's about someone who I guess is trying to rediscover their love for life and not basing it around anything that's in a physical form, but just loving life for the sake of life, I guess. But 
I just don't really feel this movie's approach at times. I don't really feel what the motive is or the drive. It's still a really beautiful movie, and some of the shots in it are very interesting. Uh, stuff that you don't really see in modern movies. Uh, a bright color aesthetic, but done with really uh, dark contrasts and low brightness. Single shots like that really do stick out in this movie because I just don't see stuff like that too often. I also like the future aspect of it because, like, for instance, they're on Mars and there's space pirates trying to take materials from them before they make it to the next space. It's kind of like seeing a Mad Max movie, but in space. But at the same time, I just don't see how those aspects fit in with the rest of the movie because it's not like the Odyssey. It's not this movie where there's many different uh, points in the journey where something exciting happens. It's more that there's a couple things and then the rest of the movie is traveling to Neptune and finding his father, which is a really good scene. It's a really, it's the best moment of the movie by far when he finally makes it to the Lemur project. But everything that happens beforehand, I don't feel is enough to justify an entire journey like this, or one that's as long as this movie is. Not that the movie is super long, but it feels long. I wanted to like this movie way more than I did, and I don't really pinpoint exactly what it is I wanted more out of this movie, because I, I just feel like I do see a lot of space movies. I feel like I've seen a movie like this before, and I don't feel like there was a lot done that makes it necessarily stand out from the rest except that it does have a more philosophical side to it, that there probably is some stuff to discuss with that ending. And I'm definitely happy to interpret it with others and see what their interpretation is. I gave you mine. But I just don't see myself really rewatching this in the future. Brad Pitt's character is someone that I didn't really like as much as I feel I'm supposed to. I would say that the movie is still good, but I just don't find it to be as good as I think the movie wants to be. And it's just something that didn't connect with me, but I see it connecting with others. I see people talking about this in the future and putting it up there with other great space movies like 2001 The Space Odyssey or something like Arrival. I could see people delving into this in the future, but for me, I think one time was good enough. It was great seeing it on a big screen. Uh, for now, I will be giving it three out of five stars. So what did you think of Ad Astra? Do you think it's one of the best space movies to be made in the last decade or one of the best of all time? Or do you find it to be a little overrated? Do you think that it's a little too full of itself? Do you think it's reaching for something that it never quite grasps? Thanks to all my Patreon supporters. For only $7, you can get your own monthly movie review. Ask me to review anything I haven't already. There's also other perks like blogs, exclusive videos, and early access. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And thanks so much for watching this video.